to when I started to shift how I use my words, words are powerful, mm -hmm. and to call it instead of attention deficit disorder, like a dis a disorder that's like something's wrong with us, and calling it attention directed to higher dimensions, it was it became more empowering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something that has really shifted my whole uh, experience of ADHD. Hey loves, and thanks so much for being here, for clicking play, and for being curious about how ADHD can be used as a superpower for your business. This conversation that I had with Paris was something that was supposed to be part of a project that never really kicked off. But I really wanted to share this conversation that we had because there were so many valuable nuggets and wisdom to share with all of you. And so I'm excited to be able to share this full length conversation with you. And I hope you're able to extract a lot of new perspectives from this so that you can take this on your journey, on your business and for your journey of growth. Appreciate you. Have fun listening. Bye. <laughs> I personally know your ADHD story, but I know for many of you who don't know who Paris is, how is How's your experience been with ADHD and where did, where did you, where did you come from? How did, how did it first start? <laughs> yeah. So, um, now where do I start? When I was younger, when I was 14 years old, that's when I was diagnosed with ADHD. And at the time I didn't really know who I was. And yeah, when, when I was first diagnosed with it, I didn't really like, like I became a victim to the label. And when I first was diagnosed with it, it made me feel really crazy. Like I couldn't do anything. and I was very incapable of taking care of myself, that I was stupid, like that I was an idiot, that I'd forget things. And yeah, it, it really just brought me down. Over the years though, like long story short, quickly, um, I started to shift my relationship to what ADHD is instead of calling it uh, attention attention deficit disorder i even forget the the original term of it because yeah, now scientific. <laughs> yeah now i call it attention directed to higher dimensions and now it's more of a tool a spiritual tool for me to embrace when i explore creating things when i explore uh, dance or any other kind of artistic medium like what i realized is that adhd is an expression it's like a it's a skill it's a superpower in the sense that I can see things from so many different angles and so many different perspectives at once and for my own unique uh, approach to doing anything. So, yeah, it's like it, in a in a nutshell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah, I every time I hear your definition of ADHD and it is shared with many of my friends and the people who have um, shared space with us, they always <laughs> they always are just like, "Whoa, that's so new and different in perspective." Like this perspective is such a new way of thinking. I love using that now. Yeah. So it's been really cool to have other people sh share that and also have people say that, oh, that's how they view it too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Attention directed to higher dimensions. Please, for anyone who's out there who has been uh, interacting with the concept of ADHD in their own lives relative to their experience and their growth, um, yeah, learn to call it that or experiment with calling it that because when I started to shift how I use my words, words are powerful, mm -hmm. and to call it instead of attention deficit disorder, like a dis a disorder that's like something's wrong with us, and calling it attention directed to higher dimensions, it was it became more empowering, mm -hmm. and so yeah, that's something that has really shifted my whole uh, experience of ADHD, and yeah, it's I feel what has allowed me to accelerate in different areas of my life to this day, too, in entrepreneurship, and also uh, in creativity. Mm -hmm. and with art or and with business mm -hmm. yeah, business, business entrepreneurship too. art um spirituality and just um allowing yourself to shift that perspective and what you say to yourself because words are powerful and what you say creates your reality mm -hmm. um and so ever since i learned that from you i don't know four years ago it definitely mm -hmm. has shifted my perspective on it because i also have adhd but i'm uh, self-diagnosed mm -hmm. and i definitely know that it can be hard to recognize that you have it mm -hmm. because we get so caught up in it mm -hmm. at least for me um i don't know how your experience was um i i remember you were admitted to um a mental institution yeah, mental institution. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so so how was that that was that was great it was wonderful um it was it was pretty difficult actually uh when it first happened so i had a breakdown um when i was around 17 years old i 
So, so growing up, I had a lot of skin diseases. I had a lot of health problems. And we talked about this actually on the first podcast that we did, con mm -hmm. the Conscious Awakening podcast. I said that right, right? Yes. Consciousness Awakening. Conscious Awakening. Conscious Awakening podcast. And um, yeah, so growing up, basically, I had a lot of health problems. And it took me out of school for long periods of time. And I barely graduated high school. And approaching my graduation date, uh, something happened where I just... I just had a really bad breakdown, one of the worst breakdowns of my life. And uh, my room, I used to draw, I used to paint a lot, and my room was covered in art. And when I had this breakdown, um, it was actually a, a relationship that triggered it. Mm. That made me think that I was just like worthless and stuff. And so much love to the the girl that I experienced it with. It's not her fault, but it, it just, it triggered a lot of traumas that built up over the years from the illnesses and stuff that I've been through. And, um, yeah, when that happened, I was just really angry and yeah, I hated myself. And then, um, yeah, I tried, I tried killing myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, I tried killing myself and I tried to overdose on Benadryl. Wow. Yeah. So for three days I would just be angry and then I didn't want to be awake. So I would, and I would want to go to sleep. So I would just take Benadryl to go to sleep. So like the pattern for three days when I was, when I was going through this breakdown, is I'd wake up, be angry, take Benadryl, and fall asleep. Wake up, be angry, take Benadryl, and fall asleep. And when I had this breakdown too, I was sitting in my room and I was surrounded by all my artwork. And to be surrounded by everything that represented me, I just hated it because I hated myself so much. So I would take down my paintings and I'd rip them up. And yeah, I just hated anything that had to do with my own existence. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and long story short, uh, my parents couldn't handle it. And then they ended up uh, calling the cops and then they came put me in handcuffs and rolled me out in a stretcher took me to the hospital um, took more Benadryl and then the next morning after the three days I woke up in a mental institution but my experience there it was actually really beautiful because when I was there I, I learned what my purpose here is and it's really to, to tell stories and to connect to people on a, at a deeper level because while I was there one all the therapists there they were they told me, like, they would take me aside and they'd say, Paris, out of all the kids in here, I actually don't know why you're in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't make sense why you're in here. And while I was there, too, what I found that I just naturally, intuitively did as an empath that I am, I, I feel people so strongly. So I would just connect with all the kids in there. I wanted to hear everyone's stories and um, hear what their passions were and support them in pursuing those things. When there were group sessions where we would all talk and talk about our feelings and stuff, I was like the only person that was raising my hand and kind of sharing and engaging with other people. And uh, when, I, when the time came, I was there for about a week or about like five days. And uh, on my last day, everyone, like, I don't want to say everyone, but a lot of them were crying that I was leaving. A lot of them, one of them said, like, Paris, I don't know what I'm going to do when you leave, and I'm going to miss you a lot. And they all wrote me letters after I left, too. And I actually still have some of those letters. I was digging through uh, some of my old files, and I found the letters from those kids in the mental institution. I was reading through them. And, yeah, it was like, <sighs> it, it just showed me that I'm not so bad. I'm not so crazy. And uh, my bigger purpose here is to is to also create sacred spaces similar to you, bro. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, like hear people and give people that empathy. Uh, going back to the ADHD thing though, um, yeah, that was one of the things in there. They So they would actually try to give me ADHD medication in there, but I never took it. I just stuffed it down my pants. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I, I know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I never took any of the medication that they gave me in there because – when it, it to, to me in my experience, like it just felt very, it made me feel crazy that I had to take medication for a mental, quote unquote, mental disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just never wanted to take it. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I never did. Um, there were there were a few times I did take it when I was 14, when I was first diagnosed with ADHD, but it numbed me. Mm -hmm. Like what I found is that it, it numbed me to my my mind and my thoughts and my creativity. Like I wasn't able to be as creative as I was or um, my imagination just kind of got really dulled mm -hmm. when I took it. And so around that time, I started to realize that it actually like to take 
ADHD medication actually removed me from my inherent ability of imagination and creativity Mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Your connection to the higher dimensions. Exactly. (laughs) It, it, it cut me off from my connection to the higher dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I always love hearing your story, and I, I always learn something new about it every time. Mm-hmm. And I love how you were able to shift that perspective, too, about being in the mental institution, of how it became a beautiful experience for you rather than something that brought you down even more. Yeah. And I'm sure you impacted many kids there. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially with those letters mm-hmm. that they were giving you at the end. And we all have different ways to hold sacred space. I mean, I feel like we all have that capability to hold sacred, sacred space, and that's part of our purpose here. But... Um, one of the things I did want to touch on is also, um, your purpose and your mission to create or to shift struggling artists into thriving artists. Yes. And that's partially, is that partially why you created 5D growth solutions? hundred percent. Awesome. Yeah. 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 So, um, oh, did you, were you going to say something? Oh yeah. No, I was, I was going to ask like, um, how did, how did 5D growth solutions come about and how did that get started? It's an excellent question. And I would say it, it came from. A culmination of experiences so um one it's like the spirituality aspect of my life is integral and in everything that i create now including this company uh, we're a marketing agency and we do press pr we help people grow their social media following build highly credible and profitable personal brands um but from that like was me experiencing that myself first mm-hmm. like um uh, where do i start what was the question again? The question was how, how did how, how did it start? Like how did how did the seed get planted and bloomed for five D growth solutions? Yeah. Okay. I know. And probably a, probably a lengthy story. Yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a long story. Um, okay. How about this? How how I should how do you use ADHD as a superpower with your business? Okay. That's a that's a th- both are good questions. I could actually answer them both. Okay. Yeah. yeah I just had to like ruminate on it a little bit. Um, well, one. So number one, the spirituality aspect and and learning how to embrace my story, embrace my own message and embrace my voice as a person and allowing myself to be seen, allowing myself to be heard and seeing the impact that that has on the people around me. Um, that spiritual awakening is integral for me, even choosing an entrepreneurial path in the first place. Two, I, I used to be mainly focusing on creative work and creative gigs as my main means of income. So what Rose said, like one of my missions in life is to create a generation of thriving artists. I come from a struggling artist background. So let's see, after I barely graduated high school, that's when Jabawakis approached me to work as a professional dancer with them at the Prism show at the Luxor. And to a lot of people, that's like the dream job. Like, oh, wow, you've made it so early on at 18 years old. And wow, you're so lucky. And Granted, like it, it was very exciting because actually after barely graduating high school, I actually didn't think I had anything going for me. Mm-hmm. I thought I was just a failure. Like my, my dad, I love my dad, <laughs> but um, coming from those like old belief systems of needing to do good in school. And if you don't do good in school, then you're going to be a failure. Like I, th- that echoed in my mind after barely graduating. So when they approached me, it, it changed my life. And I was like, wow, I could be a professional dancer right out of high school. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. And so I was working for the job walkies for about a year. And in that time, I realized that even when I'm doing something that I love, if I'm doing it as a job, it can still just be just another job. I realized that, like, I love to dance, but when I was dancing with the job walkies, I always had to look like a job walkie. Mm-hmm. I always had to dance like somebody else. And I wasn't able to truly express how I wanted to dance. And I felt like this pressure that I always had to be somebody else. And so what, what I can say is that spiritually, it was, it was, I couldn't think of a better uh, job to have that was reflective of my inner spiritual relationship to myself, though, too. Wearing a mask. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, like I was wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. And it felt so comfy to me. And it was reflective of where I was at spiritually within myself. And so, yeah, I, I realized that. And I also felt, artistically restricted because I like to be a professional dancer right out of high school at 18 years old I felt like I actually didn't even have the ability to find my own voice as a mover yet yeah so it's like even though that's a it's a beautiful job to have it's almost like I got it too quickly to where I couldn't even find myself first yeah before that and then yeah like I said I was doing the same thing every day 
and it felt artistically draining and artistically restricted. And I mean, granted, I now that I look at it, like it's also time management. I didn't know how to manage my time back then to where, okay, maybe I could focus on this while I'm doing this job. This is a cool job, so and so. But um, yeah, at, at the end of the day, I just, yeah, I lost passion for dance. Mm-hmm. I lost passion for something that I truly loved because I was just doing it for a paycheck. Yeah. And so after that year was up, um, I transitioned from job walkies and then I started doing more gig work, producing shows for corporate events with Dragon Talent. Dragon Talent's a local agency out here, entertainment uh, production company um, out here in Dragon Vegas. Talent. Yeah, shout out to Dragon Talent. <laughs> shout out to Ronnie and Marie. Love you guys so much. And I wouldn't be who I am or what I am uh, today with without you and your example of like creative entrepreneurs and yeah, everything you do is just, I, I love you guys so much. But um, yeah, so from job walkies went to the gig ind- industry and I would do uh, gigs with Dragon Talent. We would produce shows for corporate events like The Win, Encore, um, Four Seasons Hotel. And it, it was beautiful. It was fun because now they gave me the opportunity to dance how I truly want to dance mm-hmm. and not wearing a mask, but wearing my face. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, they, they blessed me with the opportunity to truly be myself on stage. And that was like the evolution of what I, what I realized that I wanted, mm-hmm. um, a step in this transmutation. <laughs> and uh, that was fun. And I loved it because I was doing different things all the time. I never knew what I was going to do next. I, I love the, the chaotic environment of creation and figuring out uh, how to make something work from nothing on a constant basis. Uh it, it was fun. And the the issue with that was, though, is that doing gig life, doing gig work, is some months I would make $4,000 and other months I would only make $400. So even though I was doing work that was fun and, and it kept me on my toes and it was uh, artistically invigorating, financially, it, it just wasn't sustainable. Mm-hmm. I was doing that for seven years. And... Um, Within that time frame, I started to realize, okay, yeah, this this isn't sustainable. As much as I love doing gigs, like I can't really make a few, like I can't imagine having a family doing just gig life or, yeah. you know, doing those types of things. I, I love gig, I love doing gigs, but it just woke me up to, okay, there, there's got to be more, mm-hmm. you know. So then um, in 2019, towards the, the middle end-ish of 2019, I went on a spiritual uh, kind of journey to New Zealand and Australia, and I connected with the Maori peoples of New Zealand. And when I was there, I had the past life regression, and I connected with, um, oh yeah, yeah, past life regression, and I was able to heal a lot of my toxic relationships to money and mm-hmm. and my dad too, and it was this whole thing. And then basically after that trip to New Zealand and Australia. I came back to Vegas with a, a completely different mindset in that I wanted to understand finances. So uh, I was targeted with this ad, <laughs> like after, like, I think like gotta three days. It. Yeah, Gotta love targeted ads. <laughs> yeah, three, three, like three days after I got back from New Zealand, I was targeted with this ad by a guy named Jeff Seconder. Uh, he runs a company called Zero Percent where he teaches people how to create financial independence, leveraging credit. And uh I, I was just in, a, in the mind state to say yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like before, I would have seen that as like, okay, that's a scam or I don't care. I don't care about money. I don't care. It's, yeah. uh, money's the root of all evil. All these toxic and unhealthy relationships to money in my head. That were passed um, down to us. Yeah, that were passed down to us by our family. Yeah. And I healed that in New Zealand. And so, yeah, I just said yes to this ad. And I ended up popping on the call and the guy was like, yeah, it's $10,000. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, yeah, f- yeah. So I ended up investing ten thousand dollars into my financial education to learn about credit, mm-hmm. and then from there, uh, started learning how to leverage OPM, uh, the importance of having a credit score. That these are like so many Great, topics. Pause. Yeah. For those who don't know what OPM is, because I know what it is. What is OPM? Oh yeah, th- yeah. Thank you for that. So <laughs> OPM is other people's money. And this is the, one of the most important things that I've learned in my life as an entrepreneur is the importance of learning how to leverage 
other people's money instead of your own money to create uh, income for yourself in different ways. And one of the ways to do that is by focusing on having a good credit score. Like a lot of people think, okay, it or whoa, how is it taught? It's taught basically have a good credit score and then you'll be able to get a good job and it helps you get a house and stuff. But what we're not taught is that having a good credit score allows you to get access to funding. Mm -hmm. It allows you to get access to financial capital. So what I learned is how to get my credit score up and then how to apply to get funding from banks. And along that journey, I got approved for around 200000 in credit to, to build and scale a business. And um, when I got approved for, for that funding, I immediately started investing into my education. So anyone out there who's listening and doesn't know where to start investing, like you don't have to invest into stocks or anything like that right from the get-go. What I would recommend investing into that you can never go wrong with is your education. Mm -hmm. Even though I barely graduated high school, even though I don't go to college, even though I don't even believe in going to college for me personally, I'm still learning. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I got access to financial capital, I, I wanted to invest into mentors and knowledge and education and courses from people that are actually doing it. I put myself in, in, in the networks. I got access to the networks with the financial capital to expand my knowledge from people who are actually doing it. Mm -hmm. you know so along the way um then i found marketing uh i mean marketing is something that i've kind of always unintentionally done ever since i was even nine years old i started doing content creation creating videos ever since i was nine mm -hmm. um to this day i'm 25 so i've been making videos and photos and all that kind of stuff for 15 years mm -hmm. um but yeah I, i've always loved creating content i've always loved telling stories and uh, even in, let me see, around when I was 19 years old, 19, 20 years old, that's also when I started diving into uh, like e-commerce. So I made my first e-commerce store and then I learned all about how to create like a, a brand on social media, how to run Facebook ads, um, how to write ad copy, copywriting, all these different like marketing skills. And I, and I loved it. It was really fun to me. So um, with that e-commerce store, I believe we made $1,000 during our first store launch mm -hmm. when we first launched the store. The only issue was with that is that I didn't know about OPM. So I actually had to stop my store because um, I had a, a health problem come up back then. Yeah, something happened with my heart. I think I was dancing and then something happened. I had to go to the hospital and then had to pay for medical bills. So I ended up having to shut the store down. But when I learned about credit, uh, like several years later, that's what changed everything. I'm like, okay, if I knew about OPM back then, this would have been, yeah, amazing. Yeah. So getting access uh, to financial capital, fast forwarding now to the state, or actually a few years ago, um, I went back into the marketing space and started expanding my knowledge and getting mentors uh, in that direction. And uh, fast forwarding now. Uh, came the fruition of 5D Growth Solutions, where we focus on PR. We focus on helping people tell their stories on credible uh, places. And um, in the mix of that, also teaching financial literacy. Like that's one of the biggest things I'm passionate about because as a struggling artist, I understand the gig life. I understand living paycheck to paycheck on gigs. <laughs> Even though we're doing what we love, it's still like a struggling artist mentality where, yeah, some some gigs you'll make, 200 bucks other gigs you'll make 2000 bucks it's just not uh relatable uh, rela rela reliable mm -hmm. it's not sustainable um so when i started learning about financial literacy leveraging opm investing passive income all these different things uh it's it's a deeply rooted purpose um in the mix of these marketing services for creatives and and other entrepreneurs too so that's kind of how it formed yeah yeah there's a mixture of things but I hope that explained it. No, okay. it definitely did. And it definitely showed that it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> yeah, it didn't happen overnight. It's, so <laughs> it's like these business ideas, I mean, sure, they come as an idea and a thought, but to actually put in the work takes time and takes action. And um, 
something you did mention. I was hoping you were going to mention it, the financial literacy portion. And mm-hmm. I've, I also forgot to mention in the beginning that with these with the show, Create With Row Show, it's specifically people who I have created with. And something I have loved creating with you was those cash flow literacy nights. <laughs> yeah, we need to do more of those yes. for sure. Like, yeah, I'm so excited to, to do more. Yeah. yeah. So for mm-hmm. those who don't know what cash flow is, can you explain what cash flow is? <laughs> yes, I can. So... Cash flow is a board game invented by a guy named Robert Kiyosaki. And some of you guys may have heard his name before. Uh, If not, you may have heard of his book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And it's a uh, very famous, legendary, classic book in the financial literacy space that uh, teaches uh, basic financial literacy and helps heal toxic belief systems on money. Um, I love it because like, I'm a very spiritual person and even though... Like right now, I am passionate about understanding the the power of money and learning how to navigate through money uh, and make a lot of it. I'm not really a material person. Like I, I don't really care about money itself. I care about navigating through it. It's more spiritual to me. And what I love about the book is Robert Kiyosaki even said that this book wasn't originally supposed to be on like finances and teaching people how to make money and passive income. It was originally supposed to be a book on spirituality Mm -hmm. and it'd be cool to throw that blurb somewhere in like of the the actual interview where he says that, but that's like, that's an actual quote from him. And uh, yeah, I love it. Just the way that the story is told in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he talks about how uh, he grew up with his, his biological father. That was his, his poor dad who uh, worked a normal nine to five job and was very successful in, in what we're taught the idea of success is in America, nine to five job, comfortable, safe, nine to five jobs actually aren't comfortable or, or no, they aren't as safe or reliable as people yeah, are as taught. As we found they out are. from yeah. the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. People who have had like 10 plus years at their corporate jobs suddenly getting laid off because of a pandemic that no one could have ever foreseen. Um, but yeah. Anyway. So yeah, he tells the story of the lessons that he learned from his poor dad who worked a nine to five job and his rich dad. That's his, it was his friend's dad actually, uh, who was an entrepreneur. And so, um, yeah, it's a very good book, highly recommend. And the, the principles from that book are, can be exercised and practice in the board game called cash flow. And, um, uh, Ro, uh, so kindly, uh, collaborated with, with me and created these, uh, events in this space actually the art haven shout, yes, out, to shout dax. out to dax yeah, shout out to dax thank you so much <laughs> that's where we're recording uh, this <laughs> yeah, for offering your space for all these things um but yeah we would set up tables we would get uh these cash flow board games and we would play and we would teach uh proper financial literacy mindsets um but yeah that's that's cash flow <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh the people who have come they are just blown away by the topics that they learned because that's not what we were taught. We weren't taught how to create passive income and use OPM and, and uh, yeah, it's just something that I would have never learned if it wasn't for you because I learned about it from you when you first started in 2019. I, yeah. 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 yeah to, to add to that too, when, when we play, cause you could just play the cash flow board game and, and learn a lot, but when you play it with the right people, mm-hmm. When you play it with the like other entrepreneurs and people who are on that mindset, like it can accelerate your your relationship to money very fast. And um, to dive a, a little bit more into the game, it what it does is it simulates working a nine to five job. So you're stuck in what's called the rat race, where you work nine to five job, you're making money from your job, and then you spend it. You spend it on your bills. And that's typically the the reality that everyone lives in. They go to work, they make money, and then they pay their bills. They go to work, they make money, and they pay their bills. But they don't have cash flow coming in irrespective of their active income. Um, so, yeah, you're in the 9-to-5 job, and then it simulates you saving, teaches you how to save, and then invest into other streams of income like real estate or stocks or an automated business so that you can generate passive income greater than your living expenses. And, yeah, this is... A, is like a quick little lesson right here. Uh, a lot of people think that financial freedom is like just all oh, having a lot of money, but we got to be more specific than that. And this is what this game teaches. And 
for those of you listening, this is what I would want you to remember. If there's anything that you take away in terms of the financial literacy aspect of this podcast right now is this, is that financial freedom is not having a lot of money necessarily. It's having the right system. And that system is having passive income greater than your living expenses. Let me say it one more time. Having passive income greater than your living expenses. And with cash flow, the, the board game, it creates a safe space to practice where you're not risking your own money on investments. And um, yeah, it's a safe place to, to practice doing that. Yeah, and I want to add that it's not only a safe space, it's also a fun space. Yes. We also have a fun time doing it. <laughs> yes, it, it, it is very fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, it's it's been amazing to journey through the cash flow board game with you because we've played it probably like at least six times, seven times Yeah, now. six times. Every single time there's something new to learn. And I mean, that goes with life too. Like every single day is another time or like another day for us to learn and, and what you put your energy towards and what you want to learn that, that will catapult you to wherever you want to be in life. And so you, when you mentioned, you know, like surrounding yourself with mentors and people who take action, um, when you were on your entrepreneur journey with 5D Growth Solutions, that, that is something that really opened up my eyes and just helped me recognize who I hang out with and like who mm -hmm. I spend my time and energy with because the time that you spend and the money you spend, they're all investments into yourself and reflections of yourself too. Mm -hmm. um, and so Paris has been one of those people who I've, um, even though we don't really see each other all the time, when we do spend time together, it's always a, a really growing and learning opportunity and, and we're always helping each other and we're always teaching each other. Like I see everyone as a teacher. I'm also, um, I, I see everyone as a teacher and I also see myself as a student and a teacher. I, I totally butchered that, but like I see myself as a teacher and a student and I believe everyone is also a teacher and a student mm -hmm. if they are open to that perspective for themselves. Um, and, uh, I just, I also wanted to circle back to, to, you know, ADHD and, and using that as a superpower for, for spirituality and art and business and, and finances too. Like, um, how, how has I ADHD helped you in terms of your financial journey and your entrepreneurship journey? <laughs> Wonderful question. Circling back to the ADHD. So, um, I like to, so there's this concept that I've been really, kind of ruminating on ruminating for the past maybe maybe like seven months eight months now i call it the flower of life method so uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar the flower of life is an ancient symbol that appears in ancient civilizations across the world so if you go to egypt if you go to japan if you go to china uh, india this symbol appears everywhere and as a testament to the interconnectedness of human consciousness. And when you look at it, it, like for me, it symbolizes and perfectly articulates how my mind functions, the interconnectedness of all things. So what I learned about entrepreneurship overall is that it's the ultimate spiritual classroom. You face your fears. It's not just about making money. Like there, there are so many other intricate things that you have to learn to be able to even do this, like talking to people. Like before I used to be so introverted and so afraid to even for people to even look at me. And so I had to go through certain things within my own growth as a human to be ready to have any kind, kind of conversation about money or helping others, you know? Um, so essentially the flower, back, back to the flower of life, kind of get off track sometimes. <laughs> Attention directed higher dimensions. ADHD. Yeah, ADHD. At its finest. At its <laughs> finest. <laughs> so... The flower of life symbol is created utilizing concentric interlocking circles. So if you look at it, one circle, and this, I wish I could like draw it, but um, I don't know, maybe you could splash something on the podcast later. I don't know. But <laughs> so one circle symbolizes, I like to interpret it as one circle symbolizes one expression of awareness or like a skill. Another circle represents another skill. So for example, this circle symbolizes dance. This circle symbolizes video creation. This circle symbolizes copywriting. This circle symbolizes painting. And uh, when looking at the flower of life through 
all the different things that I've done over the years, like dance, like uh, video production, like speaking, like painting or drawing, um, like photography. I realized that all of these skill sets are interconnected. So what I've learned from dance, what I've learned from spirituality applies into how I kind of created this marketing company in relation to like how I align my lifestyle to it too. I love telling stories and um, whether that be through dance, whether that be through a marketing campaign, whether that be through a press piece, whether that be through uh, a video. And so how do I turn that passion into a way to make income? Well, I help other people do it too. And so I'm doing what I love and helping other people do that as well because I've loved it so much for so long. Mm. Yeah, so like, um, yeah, the flower of life, it, it's basically a symbol that is a homage to how everything is interconnected. Like one skill from one asp- from one area can help accelerate a skill in another area. Did that, did, I hope that makes yes, sense. That definitely makes sense. And yeah. I love um, I love this because you created this method, right? The flower of life. I, I would say so. Like I've never heard anyone explain it the way this way, mm-hmm. but I, I'm sure there's like sim- other similar consciousness out there who probably think the same thing, but yeah. I, I just, I call it the flower of life method. It, yeah. It resonates <laughs> yeah. because it's a, um, something I used to have trouble with is just like connecting all the different parts of myself. And one thing I did want to mention that, uh, I didn't get to mention in the beginning is that Paris is like one of the, one of the most authentic people I know. And when you allow yourself to show and share your stories, allow yourself to feel seen for every single part of you, that's, that's really where that authenticity can just like grow and thrive and inspire others to share their authentic self as well. And so, um, you know, you bringing in dance and, and, and video production and marketing and finances, like bringing all that together is allowing you to just sh- shine your light even more yeah. and your auth- authenticity even more. So I just wanted to put that in there because uh, I, yeah, I have always just been inspired by Paris and it's been amazing to um, work together, to create together in wherever we are in our journey. And uh, I know something that you like to also share is that you are a multi-dimensional being. Um, is that do you feel like that's connected to um, being interconnected? Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I've actually been a lot in. How do I describe this? In a lot of the spiritual community, like we, we would describe it as, I've been very three D lately. <laughs> I've been very. Um, focused on understanding the material dimension, navigating through the, the the realm and landscape of money and entrepreneurship and all that kind of stuff. But the the deeper aspects and implications of my existence is is beyond my egoic identity of Paris. Mm-hmm. So like I love having out-of-body experiences. I love leaving my body. I see spirits and ghosts. Like this is a whole aspect I, I've actually, I, I've let sleep for the time being, but it's another very integral part of who I am as a person. And it's allowed me to, like heal a lot of my traumas, having these out of body experiences, um, facing my traumas in other realms, and and transmuting them into a more fully embodied, authentic expression in this plane. Yeah, it's <laughs> there's a lot to it. Yeah, it's a rabbit hole. We can go yeah, for hours. It's a rabbit. Yeah, I could really uh, go off on that. But um, yeah, I would say it's extremely integral. And even like the concept of being multidimensional, the the name of the marketing company is called Five D growth solutions fifth dimensional growth so even there's five dimensions to marketing but for me it's also an affirmation uh, to myself uh to the overall mission that is to have mastery of these are the five dimensions of growth have mastery over mind body spirit creativity and finance and to me at this point in time is my expression of partly what it means to be a, a fifth dimensional being operating from a fifth dimensional consciousness where all those things can connect because it's like growing up, it, it was very hard for me to see the interconnectedness of art and business. I was kind of taught and seen that you can have one or the other. You can be an artist, but you're going to be broke mm-hmm. or you can have a lot of money, 
and you could be a stick in the mud yeah. and not creative at all. Yeah. If you grew up with that story, let us know in the comments, please. Yeah. Let <laughs> us know. To, I would love to hear stories too. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, it, it's been so hard for me, like, like all these years, all these 15 years of searching, I've been seeking to like, how do you balance material, the material world and the spiritual world? That's been like my biggest life question for so many years. And I feel like now I'm, I'm starting to, to find that balance. Yeah. That's the, that's the biggest spiritual challenge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and in that is this, this philosophy, this 5d philosophy, you know, the, this multidimensional approach where it doesn't have to be this way and it doesn't have to be that way. It could be whatever way that we make it, mm -hmm. we can find our own path. Yeah. yeah and the, uh, um, the one thing that I always feel like I can share anything I can with you. Like I, um, I'm just so grateful for the safe space that you always provide for me because it's something that, um, you have taught me to also exhibit to others. It's just like that permission to explore yeah. and to just allow yourself to experience whatever you feel called to, whatever resonates for you so that you can just live this spiritual gym mm -hmm. <laughs> and learn as an entrepreneur what, um, you know, the things that come up for you in this entrepreneurship j journey and like the art journey, it's like the ones that are hard to face. Those are the ones that are here to, to come up for you to either have you choose to heal it or to complete this or continue the cycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's been, um, it's been really awesome to see you come out of your shell more. Like you mentioned earlier that you used to be shy and introverted and, you made those u videos on YouTube and yeah. Oh my God. If you see, like <laughs> I still, ha I have over 200 videos that document my growth as a person. And if you watch the very first video I've ever made to now and how I speak now, Oh my God. Yes. So much evolution. Yes. Um, I also highly recommend that other people do that. Like yes. you don't, you're not saying you have to vlog and, and be seen by the world, but if you, if you want to grow or evolve anything, record yourself, document it. Yep. And so you could see, how it grows and shifts over time. So when you document yourself, like when you're in intense emotional state, what I do when I'm in intense emotional state, I'll turn on the video and I'll start recording myself and I'll just, Egh! like I'll just, mm -hmm. I'll just let it out. I'll scream, I'll, I'll curse, I'll say, fuck me, fuck that, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. so, so you can bleep that out. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Um, and then when, when I feel like I finished releasing, I'll be like, okay, and then I'll, I'll turn off the camera and then I'll watch it. All, you watch yourself in your authenticity. You watch yourself in your pure beingness without any filters, without trying to censor it for other people. Without judgment. Without judgment. And if you could learn how to do that, like that's one of, one of the ultimate forms and expressions of learning how to love yourself. And if you do that consistently, like it, it's like you're having an out-of-body experience. This is how I like to describe it. When you watch yourself be yourself on camera, it's, you're literally watching you outside of your body being that authentic self and the authentic version of you. It allows you to disconnect from your ego a little bit and just observe yourself. And um, yeah, it, it's a tremendous tool for spiritual growth. So I would highly recommend it. <laughs> I highly recommend it too. Yeah. Ever since I started documenting myself more. And also I learned that tip from you. Um, I know some people have asked you on Instagram how to like how to create more content mm. and your perspective is to document yourself. Yeah. And that in itself is content. Yeah. 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 If you want to, if you want to make content, if, you, if you're one of those people that says, oh man, it's, it's so hard to make content, like just document. Mm -hmm. Don't focus on content creation, focus on content documentation. And then before you know it, you'll have just a ton of content that you could repurpose for later. Cause right now you may not know the story that you want to tell. You may not know who you are or where you're going, but if you just document it, there's going to come a point in time where you look at the, the, the bigger scope of all of that documentation that you've done, and then you will find the story. You'll see the story there. Mm -hmm. Like I started making vlogs when I was 16 years old, I'm 25 now. So like 15 nine, years. Nine years. Nine years. Nine years. Is that nine years? 11, 16, like, yes, yeah, 16 to 25. Yeah, that's nine years. Nine years. Okay. Yes. Nine years. That's completion too. Nine's a good number. A yeah. Angel but, numbers. Yeah, angel <laughs> numbers. But it, like, b because I have all that documentation, I can look back at it and see, wow, that's really how far I've come. Mm -hmm. And now I could utilize that story and, and, and share it 
with the intention to to open someone else uh, so, yeah, to open someone else up to a new perspective mm-hmm. or to use it to heal other people too and to vi- invite others and inspire others to document yeah cuz that's something um i unintentionally did like i've always loved documenting mm-hmm. and before though my intention was seeking external validation mm-hmm. so when i was on instagram i would post something for the likes and to, to you know just have that dopamine rush mm-hmm. now it's more my intention is i'm documenting for myself and for those who resonate with it will be attracted and will come and um i just did a reel recently where it's, there is a voiceover that says i don't chase i attract and yeah. that's that's something that is really eye-opening for me on my entrepreneurial journey mm-hmm. um to to chase is is i've learned that scarcity fear mindset and that attract and attraction is that abundance empowered mindset mm-hmm. yeah 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 and um yeah, when it comes to documenting, it, if you feel scared to document yourself and look at yourself, that in itself is something I invite you to look at. Yeah, and, it's and all the more reason why you should do it. Yeah, all the more <laughs> reason. I think um, the video um, at one of the shows you're at right now, they have a quote on the wall that says, the thing that you're most scared of is the one that will set, set you, you free. free. Yeah, that the resonated th- with The me. thing that you're most afraid of is the thing that will set you free. Oftentimes, like, the, th- the things that we have the most resistance towards is the, the compass towards our growth. And that's, for me, that's what I'm about. I love growth mindsets. I love mm. facing my fears. And immediately when resistance comes up, I like to face it immediately. Um, to the best of my ability, I'm not like the best at it, but I'm, st- I'm still learning every day. But if you feel a fear of being seen, the documentation thing, like Rose said, if you feel that resistance, I would highly encourage and support you to to try it and then see what happens because that's when you learn the most about yourself is when you're uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I there is this one video I posted of me dancing. I was terrified to watch myself. I loved like, that video. Thanks. You see that though? Like you posted it and I'm like, yeah. I face my fears. <laughs> yeah. And really that's just, I mean, even when you start documenting yourself, if you feel like documenting yourself after listening to this video, there's no rule telling you you have to post it on Instagram. Yeah. Do it for yourself mm-hmm. and see where it takes you. Yeah. Do it in your own private space. Other people don't have to see. But what it does is it increases your relationship to you. Mm-hmm. Your relationship to you. Oftentimes, like, other people see us, but we don't even see us, like, majority of the time either. The only time we see us is, like, when we're looking at a mirror or maybe through photos. But when you're capturing yourself through a video, you could see your facial expressions. You could see your, like when you're saying something, you could tell when you're lying. Like oh, you, yeah. you can't hide from yourself. <laughs> That's one of the, the, like I get scared still when I record myself and document myself and watch things. I still get scared. Same. Still. But I, still, but I love to look at it because it's like, ah, there, that's where you're fucking up, Paris. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you're, you're hiding. And yeah, maybe other people... They don't need to see that, but yeah, you can't hide from you. You're, you're, you are what I found and discovered over my 25 year lifespan so far <laughs> is that like you can't hide from you. And also you are your own greatest source of wisdom. So when you, when you look at yourself as if you're an outside perspective, another person, what advice would you give to that person on the screen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It allows you to, to kind of build that type of relationship to yourself too. Yeah, there's there's a quote that resonates with me all the time. So sometimes, well, not sometimes, the medicine we teach is the one that we need the most. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. just allowing yourself to to take a moment to observe yourself. I love how you mentioned that it's like an out of body experience. It's like a physical out of body experience, yeah. <laughs> like watching yourself on a video. Yeah, you're watching yourself in the past, mm-hmm. in the future, mm-hmm. in the present moment. When you're watching yourself on a video, mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's what it is. Yeah. And I mean, really, this is what this is. Like this podcast is a documentation where we are now, where, how, how far we've come. Yeah. Who knows where we're going to be in five years, 10 years from now. Doing another yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to look at this and be like, wow, remember that? Remember what we were going through at that time there? And when you were struggling with this, I was struggling with this, but how, how far did we overcome? How much did we heal? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you watch 
the first episode of Conscious Awakening, um, which I'll put in the show notes. Uh, I mean, you can tell that I've definitely grown a lot in terms of speaking. You've definitely grown a lot in terms of speaking. Yeah. And um, I mean, goes for everyone who's who was on that journey with me. That was like the start of my spiritual journey, and we're still going now. It's including business and finances <laughs> and yeah. entrepreneurship. And uh, I wanted to ask if you had one advice for someone who is getting into entrepreneurship and who has ADHD, what what advice would you give them for the next step after listening to this? Good. To, to good use question. that as their superpower. Yeah, good question. Yeah, definitely use it as a superpower. Learn something from everything. I think one of the, like I used to be really scared going into the realm of entrepreneurship as an artist and as a creative ADHD attention directed to dimension person. Um, but what I realized is that because of my ADHD, I've just done so much shit. Like <laughs> I've done so much yep. shit. I've traveled. I've I've dabbled in a lot of things. I've dabbled in painting. I've dabbled in music production. I've uh, dabbled in dance. I've dabbled in acting. I've dabbled in so many things. But what I've realized is because of my attention directed to higher dimensions, what that's did, what that's done, is it's allowed me to develop such a unique perspective and approach to business. Because I speak so many languages of industries. I understand a lot of different industries because I've just dabbled in a lot of things because of my ADHD. Like this used to be actually a really big insecurity of mine because I didn't have one focus. Yep. The jack of all trades. Yeah. Uh, the jack of all trades, master of none. Do you know the full quote of that? Actually, I don't. The full quote of that is a jack of all trades, master of none, but it's better to be a master of many than a master of one. Mm. Or a... Uh, what was it? It's better to be, yeah, something, yeah, a master of many than a master of one. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was a master. It was something like that. But basically, that, that was the full quote. It's cut off at Jack of all trades, master of none. Mm. But, yeah, essentially, yeah, embrace your ADHD and embrace your, your, mind, your mind's natural tendency to go in a lot of different paths. And then, like I'm the type of person too to gather a bunch of paint and throw it at the canvas and then find find the picture within the chaos. That's just how I work personally. Um, other things from there is let's see. Another advice would be task management, time management. Mm -hmm. That's another important thing. Uh, the way that I've learned how to be efficient with my time though is to basically like mind hack myself convince myself that something is fun yes yeah that's something i learned from atomic habits yeah like when you're when you're shifting those habits you don't want anymore and and, and implementing habits that you want to have in your life make it fun yeah make it fun like if you're uh like let's say in entrepreneurship you have to learn about financial literacy don't think about okay i have to learn about financial literacy and money and i, I don't care about money blah 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 like i actually had that same exact thought but i made it fun by saying okay if I learn about financial literacy, what is that? What's the end result of that? Creating a generation of thriving artists who aren't afraid of money, mm -hmm. learning how to gain access to money so I can make more cool stuff. And then when I when I made that intention more prominent, that purpose, when I attach that purpose to the task, it makes me do it and not even question it. Not uh, I wasn't lazy. I didn't uh, get distracted because I get laser focused. And I think anyone out there with ADHD attention directed higher dimensions gonna keep saying that <laughs> anyone out there with adhd uh, who has a problem focusing you find that you can focus on things that you actually give a shit about yeah <laughs> like, that's where your energy is just like really drawn to and i don't think that's a bad thing i think that's incredible you could have tunnel vision on things that we're actually passionate about mm -hmm. and i think that's good oh know? yeah yeah and so the the evolution of that is learning how to convince ourselves to be passionate about even the mundane things mm -hmm. some of the main mundane things like like Is folding it mundane if you make it fun exactly <laughs> like folding laundry for example uh, my girlfriend Lainey, like she she loves folding laundry i i suck at folding laundry like that's some that's a task that is very mundane and boring to me like i don't want to do it mm -hmm. but like one of the ways that i kind of mind hack myself for folding laundry is treating it as a meditation like, okay, as I'm folding laundry, I'm solving this problem in the business too. And when I finish folding the laundry, I set the intention that I'm going to understand the next step in the business. Mm -hmm. So I like, I, I turn it into like a game. 
Yep. Kind of too. Yeah. So like learning how to time manage and also embrace your attention directed to higher dimensions, all your wild ideas. That's what the world needs more of. Mm-hmm. I truly believe that like creatives are the ones with all the, the ideas. And I feel like also, I feel like so many entrepreneurs have ADHD. Every single entrepreneur I talk to, they, their mind goes a million miles a second. Yep. Yeah. And there are things that they are also just shitty at. <laughs> like, like I'm so bad at so many things too. So, okay. The third one. So I'm going to give you three. One, embrace your ADHD. Two, time management. Three is, oh shit, I lost it. <laughs> Hold on. ADHD processing. <laughs> Rainbow wheel on, Ra- on the map. Rainbow wheel. Um, this one is delegation. Mm-hmm. Yes. Delegation. I know as creatives and as, uh, yeah, people who are, ex- who can be extremely passionate about what we create, we tend to be so attached to the thing that we're doing that we just want to control everything mm-hmm. and we don't want to trust other people to help us with different things. And I had a big problem with this too. Um, but one of my biggest evolutions in my journey is to realize that I can trust other people and creating with others is how you truly create great things. And one of the ways that I practice that experientially is with Ro. Like I, I'm very hard to trusting people and, uh-huh. and like, and working together with people. I'm scared like of working together. I'm like a lone wolf kind of dude. Same. That's me too. Yeah. I was. Yeah. <laughs> but when, when you find the right people, uh, like, act on that and figure out how you can collaborate with other people who who are similar minded who are on the same path because acknowledging like like you got to acknowledge your strengths and weaknesses like i i wanted to be good at everything i still have that mindset a little bit like i just want to do everything myself i could be the best at everything yep but i'm starting to realize shit i don't want to do that <laughs> there's there's things that i just suck at and i'm like wow i need somebody else to help me with this and that would really help and and that's what really i think shifted everything for me in, in the business because before I would do all the graphic design, I do all the video production, all that kind of stuff. But now uh, I delegate. Now I have teams that manage different aspects of the business that do the video editing or the social media management or the press and the PR for, for clients. And that frees me up time to do things like this. Mm-hmm. Which I'm really grateful for. Right. Because so, this has been an amazing conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so now like I can make impact in so many different areas and, and focus on the things that I truly love too. Like that, not that I don't love those other things, but yeah, like I, I love having conversations. I love having these types of conversations. And again, towards the purpose of creating a generation of thriving artists, I can't do that if I'm focused on writing an email. <laughs> you know, I can't do that if I'm focused on just creating um, like, like 20 social media posts for one client, you know? So I trust somebody else to do that who has who has the skills that are maybe even be better than mine. Yeah. And 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 uh, give that client that that great service. And then I can be present in these types of things too. Yeah. So to, to recap, embrace your ADHD as a tool for you to accelerate your growth and expansion and find the in- interconnectedness of your skills. Like everything that I've learned from dance and telling stories, I know how to make people feel things because mm-hmm. I've been in entertainment. I can make people cry. I can make people laugh. I can make people angry. Like <laughs> that, that can be kind of manipulative, but like for, for the, for um, it could be used for good and evil, right? Like, like the Jedi and the Sith. But because I understand those things, it accelerates my ability to help people in marketing mm-hmm. and to help people tell their stories in, in, uh, in beautiful ways. So embrace your ADHD Two, time management, find ways to make mundane things fun. Um, and, Attach purpose to your tasks every day. Intentionality uh, with with your everyday life. And three is, what was three again? Delegation. <laughs> Delegation. <laughs> and see, this is why, uh, like, you trust other people. See, I forgot, but then she was there to pick up the slack and, <laughs> and bring it back. <laughs> Got right? you. Right? See? So delegation. Embrace your ADHD in the skills of ADHD. It's a skill. It's a superpower. Manage your time, make it fun, and delegate. Those are my tips. <laughs> yeah, claps, 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 claps. <laughs> and we are at one, one, one. 
Yes. Oh, 101. 101, 101, Oh, yes. Yeah, it was <laughs> right when I looked at it, it was 111. ADHD. <laughs> um, well, as we're hitting this hour mark, I definitely wanted to close out with some questions that I wanted to um, ask every single person who's on the show. Um, well, actually, I don't Do I? What is, what is one of the favorite things that we've, we've created together so far? Like me and you? Yeah. Definitely. I think definitely the, the cash flow sessions. Yeah. I think that's one of my favorites and I do miss it. And I've also been building re- relationships with more people in the dance community that really want to play. Nice. So um, I've been going out more and more uh, since I've been based in Vegas more and more. And I would like to do that again. Yeah. It's, I feel like it, it's so needed still. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you want to join us for a cash flow night again, please let us know in the comments because we would love to have you. Yes. And um, for me, I, I I just love our trip to Arco Zondi. That, oh yeah. <laughs> that's also one of my favorites. Yes. Wait, in the more recent times, the cash yeah. flow. Yeah. Um, I do want to go to Arco Santi again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah same. Mm-hmm. I have many visions and ideas for, for Arco Santi and like doing events. Events yeah. there. Um, something I wanted to also touch upon when you were talking about, you know, having many ideas, I used to tell myself that having so many ideas was so bad and overwhelming. Now I celebrate and shifting that perspective about all the ideas that I have, um, and recognizing that when you focus and take that time to, to laser focus and to, to channel your energy into one of those ideas, then it's a step for all of your other ideas to come to life. Yeah. Like you want to be strategic with your ideas. I still have so many ideas too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't act on all of them at once. But I can act, I can act on a select few. And write, write them down. That's another thing. Yes. If you have an idea, just write it down. You can forget about it later, but just write it down. Yeah. yeah. I, have a, I have an idea slash dream like box mm-hmm. where I just throw it in there. Yeah. Write it down because you'll never know when you'll be flipping through the pages and you'll be like, oh my God, there's that. There's that one idea that was so great. Shit, I can act on it now. Yeah. You know? And uh, when you do that, it it adds material substance. Like there's something there's something about, you can have an idea and it's just in the ether, but when you write it, it make it, it's the step towards materializing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah we, and and uh, when it comes to these ideas too, it's like, like you mentioned, you're only one, it's only you. You can't do all of them. And that's why it's important to delegate and to reach out to people who are strong in that lane to make that idea come to life. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, Well, is there anything else you want to share on the topic of ADHD, spirituality, art, business? Hmm. Let me see. Before we close out this container. (laughs) What I would say is again, like I'm still learning new things every single day. Like, and the things that I've shared on this, in this conversation are things that I still practice every single day like I don't have everything figured out I'm still learning and growing and evolving but I hope it was helpful to the people that have have listened and um truly entrepreneurship is the ultimate spiritual classroom Mm -hmm. it is connected like entrepreneurship isn't just about making money and all that it's it's about growth it's about growing as a human growing as a person what do you contribute to the world what do you want to give to others um and uh yeah, and with ADHD, it's a superpower. And you ju- we just weren't taught how to, uh, like, navigate with it. We're not taught how to harness the superpower. Mm-hmm. We're just convinced that it's a disorder. but And it's limiting. And, and it's limiting. Yeah. But what I've come to find is it's the one thing that has accelerated me in everything that I do. Yes, and helped me expand, and I'm sure it helped you expand as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, still to this day. Yes. Well, how can people find you on the interwebs and work with you so that uh, they can check you out? Yeah. So um, how to work with you? <laughs> yeah. So if you would like to connect with me, follow me on Instagram at I am Paris. That's I A M P E R R I S. It's like Ferris wheel, but with a P. Mm-hmm. And um, you could also go to our website, company website at five dgrowth dot com. And uh, let's see, is there any other social channels I got? LinkedIn, Paris, <laughs> just type, type my name too. Paris Aquino. <laughs> Paris Aquino. Um, but yeah, those are the main channels I use. It's Instagram and yeah, you can connect with us on the website. Yeah, 
And that's how we met through Instagram. Yep. Instagram, social media has brought so many beautiful connections um, through the time of COVID. And as uh, challenging as it was, it brought about this type of, um, yeah, connection and relationship building. So I'm grateful for social media. Yeah. And if you're someone that has a love-hate relationship with Instagram, that's a whole nother topic I'd love to share. Yeah, we can go on so many Oh, I, yeah. You could go to town about that too. Well, I mean, <laughs> if if you have any topics you want to have us expand on, if if you want Paris back for another episode, let us know too. Yeah. Cuz uh we can we can go on for hours and yeah. um there also if you want to listen to our very first episode of Conscious Awakening, there's a lot of gems in there too. Mm-hmm. I would definitely invite you to watch that documentation, listen to that documentation, and hopefully it'll inspire you to, you know, s- See us, how we've grown in three and a half years. And um, the power of documenting yourself is truly uh, expansive. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yay. Yeah. Well, I thank you again so much, Ferris, for joining me and for honestly giving me the push to finally do this first episode and record it and for bringing your equipment to mm-hmm. um, and for just really being there for me. Uh, I also wanted to share one time. <laughs> I texted him, um, have you ever thought about the question, am I meant to do entrepreneurship? Because I was having a breakdown. Yeah. And that's when that's when Paris told me, like, entrepreneurship is the ultimate spiritual classroom. Yeah. I also said, yes, yeah. I have thought about that too. Because <laughs> yeah. it's very, it isn't for everyone. But it's what I can say is it is for the person that wants to grow, that wants to discover more of themselves, that wants to expand who they are and their understanding of themselves and other people Mm -hmm. yeah and specifically if you are here and you're an entrepreneur and having that question as well we are here to encourage you to keep going (laughs) you can do it the world needs more entrepreneurs yes we're at the forefront purpose driven entrepreneurs yeah Yeah. we're at the forefront of expanding the consciousness of the human race i truly believe that and creating a new earth yeah we're doing it Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i really 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 appreciate you spending your time listening to our conversation and um if there's anything that really stuck out to you and resonated with you love to hear in the comments yeah and let us know yeah subscribe if you want to be one of the first to get notified of our new episodes that are dropping every wednesday and yeah let us know if there's anything that you want us to touch upon if you want paris back again and yes um I love you. I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. And until next time. Until next time. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Good morning. Good after. Good good, good after evening and good night. (laughs) (laughs) Also, (laughs) and thank you for creating with me by listening to this episode. Because we're all creating together. Co-creation. (sighs) Co-creation. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. I was going to go to one-on-one, but it's fine. Yay, that was fun! That was good! Yeah, that was great! (laughs) I feel that we find the light in darkness, and there are some of us who, like, we need to, like, reach our our lowest of lows in order to realize our power of choice. Like, I had to keep choosing what was not good for me in order to finally wake up to, like, be like, okay, this really hurts. (laughs) I don't want to do this anymore.